My name is Rodrigo Albuquerque and this is lecture 2 of 7 from the course of Introduction to Kinetics. All uh, movies, all slides can be watched in YouTube and they are shown in my homepage www.labsuprochem.com and you click on Teaching. So in the last lecture in this lecture, I will review some key points, what I have shown in the last lecture. And today we will derive integrated rate laws. We wish to understand the graphical form of the integrated rate laws for zero, first and second order reactions. And then we try to learn the isolation method. Okay, the last lecture uh, we have discussed um, the meaning of reaction rate and um, it is uh, represented by this V, V of T, so the reaction rate at the time T is nothing else than the, than the, uh, the production rate, the, the consumption rate of the reagent at that time um, with a negative sign before because this quantity here is negative as we have seen before so that we add a minus sign to get a positive V. So reaction rates are always positive. And this is also given by the um, variation of the concentration of the products uh, divided by the time, infinitesimal variation of time. Um, this has a positive sign because this um, fraction is positive. Um, and the units used for the reaction rates are molar, per second or mole per liter per second or um, mole per cubic decimeter per second. We have also seen how to derive expressions for direction um, rates V based on the stoichiometric coefficients for, of a given reaction. So in this case we have 2, 1 and 2 as stoichiometric coefficients for this reaction and um, we have here for the consumption rate of nitrogen oxide we have this fraction and we have a minus sign because this is negative and the consumption rate of oxygen shown here we have also negative sign because this is a reagent so that's minus sign plus this fraction you have a positive um, sign remember that reaction rates are always positive in this case, you have the production rate of nitrogen dioxide. So this fraction here is um, positive. So we, we just need to add positive sign. In fact, we don't use a positive sign when it's positive. And on the denominator, as you see here, we have the stoichiometric coefficients 2, 1, 2. As you see here, 2, 1, 2. So we have seen last lecture, this expression allows us to infer the relationship between um, production rates and consumption rates. We have also seen the definition of a rate law. Rate law gives you, is another way to give you um, um, the reaction rates as a function of the concentrations of reagents. So in this case we have um, concentration of A to the power of X, concentration of B to the power of Y. And the proportionality constant here, k, is um, the rate constant. x and y are order of reaction with respect to a or b, respectively. And x plus y is the overall order for this reaction. So just re we remember that r rate laws are experimentally determined. So we need to do experiments and to monitor concentrations as a function of time in order to um, to obtain, to calculate, to predict rate laws. And we have also seen that zeroth order reactions um, they can be, they have rate laws given by, uh, by um, this expression. So reaction rates do not depend on concentrations while for the first order reaction uh, reaction rates depend on the concentration to the power of 1 
as we show here. And the second order reactions, concentra uh, reaction rates depend on the second order of the concentration. So if you don't remember this, just check the first lecture, which is also available online. Now today, let's integrate, uh, let's derive the integrated rate law. Uh, this is an expression that gives the concentration as a function of time. So let's suppose we have a very simple reaction, A decomposed into B, and we have learned um, that the reaction rate is given by minus the consumption rate of reagent A. Um, for a zeroth order reaction, so first of all we need to, to make an assumption here, let's assume um, this reaction is zeroth order. Um, so in this case we know that rate laws are given for zeroth order reactions are just given by this expression, so the reaction rates do not depend on concentration. So it's given by this expression. So we have two expressions actually for Vt. Vt is given by this here, instantaneous uh, consumption rate of reagent A, minus this value, and Vt is also given by K. So we just need to equate both to obtain this new expression here, where we get K equals to minus um, the instantaneous consumption rate of reagent A. Now let's separate um, the variables, let's put time dependence on the left side and concentration dependent on the right side, dependence on the right side. So we separate time and concentration. So just put the time to the left and leave the concentration on the right. Now we just need to integrate this expression. So when we integrate, we just remember that at time zero, we have a concentration zero, so uh, initial concentration of A, which I represent by A zero. At time T, we have concentration A. Because these are the limits of the integral we need to solve. And this is shown here. So the integral of K dt, is the left side of this equation, uh, is integrated from time zero to time T. And the right side is integrated from time concentration A0, so the initial concentration, to the concentration A. And the minus sign just goes to the outside of the integral. And we just need to remember that integral of dx is equal to x plus a constant um, when you don't have a um, limit for this integral. In the case we have the limits, so this constant c just disappears because it's um, subtracted from one another, so you get zero. Now, solving this here, we have integral of dt is just t. k is a constant, can go out of the integral, outside, and now we have t changing from 0 to t, so these are the limits of this integrated variable here, and uh, dA, the integral of dA is just A, concentration of A, changing from A0 to A. So now we just apply the superior limit minus the inferior limit here, so k multiplied by t minus 0 equals to, we get the A minus A0. So just show it here, and we can rearrange this expression to get kt equals to this here. Um, finally, this is already a, a version of our integrated rate law for a zeroth order reaction. So this is a, um, the final expression where we can calculate the concentration A at different times provided we know the rate constant k and the initial concentration of A. So this is a very important expression. This allows us to know, to get some information 
of for a given reaction, like to predict concentrations or to predict uh, times for if you know a specific concentration. Anyway, you can use this expression in different ways. You can also use you know, your collected data. You just go to the laboratory, you collected um, different concentrations and different times, and then you can apply this uh, equation just to check if what you have in your direction you have is zeroth order. Now, this expression we just derived for the zeroth order reaction. So A depends on K, T, and on the initial concentration A0. We just notice that uh, this expression here is very similar to a linear equation where we have y equals ax plus b. So in this case, um, we could actually plot this data if we have concentrations a of a for different times t. So we could try to plot to see if we get a linear relation. So we can plot this data here if you have a table of concentration, different concentrations of a for different times. You just plot here and you can generate a, a line, a straight line. This line intercepts the y-axis at this point here, initial concentration of A, so this is in fact the intercept. And the gradient or slope of this line is going to be minus K, as you can see here. So A is the slope of this line, of this equation, and this is minus K. Now, how can we use this expression and this knowledge of this linear equation? First, you go to the lab and you measure the concentration of A at different times, T. So you make a table. Then you plot concentration of A against time. So you get different points here. And then you get a straight line. If yes, great. So your reaction is zeroth order with respect to A. Actually, zeroth order. Um, is, um, doesn't depend on concentration, so you don't need to say with respect to A, but your reaction is zeroth order reaction. Um, when you now make linear fit, you can now get, if you plot this in Excel, you can get uh, the slope A and the intercept B, and now you see that the slope or the gradient is minus K. So you, you shall get um, a negative slope but the negative slope is equal to minus k, so that you get a positive um, reaction um, constant, k. Okay. And the intercept is A0, as shown here. A rate constant then is positive, and uh, the intercept is, is also positive. Now, how to calculate the gradient? Now, if you have the points here, you have a triangle, as you can see here. So the slope of this, um, of this arrow, you just take delta y divided by delta x. So it's a very simple procedure to calculate the slope. In this case, the slope is negative. So you take the initial point, the final point, and so the final y value here minus the initial y value divided by the final x value minus the initial x value. So it's delta y divided by delta x here. Where in my y axis I have concentration, in the x axis I have the time. So just let's um, do a task. Um, a student measure the concentration of A for different times um, for the reaction A given B and use this data to plot the dashed line shown on the right. So we, the student has plotted this line. Um, so we need now to calculate the rate constant K for this reaction. Now you, you can solve this problem and just pause um, this video and click and play uh, when you are ready to see the answer. 
Now, um, to discuss how to solve this problem, so this is your initial point, and this is your final point, because you move from left to right along the time axis. Um, then we have a triangle here, we can now calculate delta y divided by delta x. Um, so since this is a straight line, the first point you need to notice is that this behavior, the behavior of the constant of A is a function of time, gives a straight line. So this is a zeroth order reaction. The integrated rate law for a zeroth order reaction you have we have derived before is given by this expression here. So that the gradient the slope of this um, line is equal to minus k. k is what we want to determine here. But the gradient can be given by delta, delta of this, these two values, divided by delta of these two values here. So the final, the concentration a minus a0, um, divided by t minus t0. So this is the final concentration, concentration of the final point minus concentration of the initial point, divided by the time of the final point minus time of the initial point. So this would give a minus 2 molar divided by 5 seconds. Uh, this is negative, but we know that the gradient is equal to minus k, so k is going to be positive. So k is going to be 0.4 molar per second. Um, here we also know, yeah, the units of k comes automatically from here, but we can also determine, we have learned already how to determine the units of, um, of the rate constant, k. So in this case, the correct answer is d, it's plus 0 0.4 molar per second. Remember that rate constants cannot have, cannot be negative, so we have positive values. Um, now let's see the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Let's take a simple reaction of the time A given B, and uh, the rate law would be the reaction rate is given by k multiplied by the concentration of a to the power of 1 because this is a first order reaction. So this is k multiplied by concentration of a. We don't need to show the 1, the exponent 1 here. Now we also know that uh, the reaction rate is given by minus the consumption rate of reagent A. So we just need to equate Vt and Vt to get this expression. K multiplied by concentration of A is equal to this here. Now we do the same as we did before. We move the time, any time variable to the left and concentration to the right. And now we have K dt equals minus d a divided by a, concentration of a. And now we need to integrate. We integrate the left side and integrate the right side of this expression. But just remember, well, let's think about the um, intervals here. So the time, at time zero, we have the initial concentration of a or a zero. At time t, we have the concentration a. And now, we just make the integral, integral of the left side, changing so the, the t variable changes from 0 to t, and the concentration changes from initial concentration of A to final concentration of A. Now, okay, the constant can go out of the integral, the minus sign goes also out, and we have one tip, the integral of dx divided by x is ln, the natural logarithm of x, plus a constant. If you have uh, limits here for this integral, um, this constant just disappears, as is the case. We have limits here 0 and t, and initial concentration of a and concentration of a. So that we have 
the integral of dt is t, changing from 0 to t, and the integral of dA divided by A is just ln of A, and solved in these uh, limits from A0 to A. Now we have k t minus 0 equals to minus, and then we have ln of A minus ln of A0, which are the limits of this integral. We can rearrange this expression in order to get our final integrated rate law for a first order reaction. So this is an integrated rate law. It allows us to predict the concentration of A for different times if we know K and if we know the initial concentration of A. So this is a very important um, react, uh, equation. And we can also apply uh, this equation to our experimental data just to check if what we have is a first order reaction or a zero order reaction or any other order reaction. Tip two here in this case is just remember that ln of x minus ln of y is equal to ln of x divided by y. So this is a property of logarithms. For instance, ln of 10 minus ln of 2 is equal to ln of 10 divided by 2, which is ln of 5, natural logarithm of 5. So this I have used this to transform this expression. Actually, we could use yeah, to get this second um, expression. They are basically the same. I just use this property of the logarithm and to have this other um, reaction. This other, sorry, this other um, expression. So both expressions are expression. The expression for the first order reaction. Sometimes we see this here. Sometimes we see this here. But they are equivalent. They are the same. Now, we have um, derived the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. What can we do now? So, first we recognize that um, this reaction, uh, this equation, is similar to a linear equation. If we, if we say that ln of a is y, um, minus k is a, and ln of a0 is b. So actually, we can now plot, if we have this data, experimental data, we just plot these values to get the slope and to get the intercept. Now, if we have concentrations of a at different times, t, um, we can now plot this data and we can um, make a linear regression to get a line. If we get a line, the intercept is going to be the natural logarithm of the initial concentration of A, and the gradient or slope will be minus K. Now, when you go to the lab, you measure concentrations of A at different times, T. We just have now a table of concentrations against times. And then you apply the logarithm to the concentrations and you plot ln of a against time. Then you get a straight line. Great, so your reaction is a first order reaction. In this case, with respect to the reagent A. Um, if you get the parameters of this fit, if you make a regression here, you get using Excel, for instance, you get the gradient minus k, so you can get um, the rate constant k, and you can get also the intercept. The intercept is going to be logarithm of initial concentration of A, from where you can take the initial concentration of A. From minus k, you can derive k. So this is how we use this expression, this integrated rate law. Um, so, if you plot now the other expression for, um, for this integrated rate law, it's, it's in the previous slides. So, if you plot ln of the ratio of concentration of A and initial concentration of A against A, you obtain a straight line with gradient minus K. 
In this case, the intercept will be zero because now the intercept was in included here um, together with the constellation of A. So you would get a straight line, negative slope, intercept would be zero. Now let's integrate the, the rate law for, let's de uh, derive the integrated rate law for a second order reaction. Let's make a simple, let's assume a simple reaction, A given B. In this case, um, the reaction rate is equal to the rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A to the power of 2 because it is a second order reaction with respect to reagent A. Now, we already know that uh, the reaction rate is also given by the minus the consumption rate of reagent A. We just need to equate both Vt's to get this expression here. Now we rearrange this, we, we want to get time on the left side and concentrations on the right side. So we just rearrange this, kdt equals to this here. And again we need to integrate the left side and the right side to derive our integrated rate law. Now at time 0 we have the initial concentration of A, at time t, we have the final concentration of A. And now we just integrate, as I showed before. So it's a very simple uh, integration. In this case, we have the limits from 0 to t of the left side. And this here, the, the limits are from initial concentration of A to concentration of A. The only difference now is that the tip I give is integral integral of dx divided by x squared is minus 1 divided by x plus c, where this constant just disappears if we have the real limits for this integral, as indeed we have. So we integrate the left side, k dt is kt, the integral, changing from 0 at t, change from 0 to t. And integral of dA divided by a squared is 1 over a, um, changing from a0 to a. Now we have k multiplied by t minus 0. And on the right side, we have 1 divided by a minus 1 divided by constant of a0. We can rearrange this expression to get our integrated rate law for a second order reaction. And this is the reaction, this is the expression um, that's very useful because it allows us to predict concentrations as a function of time. If we have, of course, K and initial concentration of A. Now, we have this um, expression we just have derived for a second order reaction. And we just realized that we could uh, use this as a linear equation. We could um, we compare this with a linear equation, y equals ax plus b. And now we see that the um, dependent variable is 1 divided by a. And x is the time here. The slope is k. And the intercept is now 1 divided by a0 the initial concentration of A. And if we have the data, experimental data, we just plot 1 divided by A on the y-axis and times on the x-axis. So that we get many points. If we make a linear fit, a regression of, this, of these points to get the gradient, we get a positive slope or gradient, which is K. And the intercept will be 1 divided by concentration of A at time 0. Now, you go to the lab, you measure the initial concentration. Sorry, you measure the different concentrations of A at different times, T. So we have a table of values of concentration of, of, of A against time. And then you convert the concentration to 1 divided by concentration because you're going to plot 1 divided by concentration and you plot it against time. 
that you get a straight line here, as shown here, great. So your reaction in this case is a second order reaction with respect to A, the reagent A. Um, when you make the fits, the gradient is K, and the intercept is 1 divided by initial concentration of A. Now let's make our last task here. So um, the reaction A given B, the composant to B, has the rate law Vt equals to K multiplied by A squared, a concentration of A squared. So where the, the rate constant K is given. After some seconds of reaction, the student measured the instantaneous reaction rate and obtained this value here. So this is instantaneous reaction rate of um, for this reaction. So it's 0 0.1. Now, what was the molar concentration of A at that instant? So you can solve now and stop this video and then you play again to see the answer. And here is the answer. Um, so first of all, this is a, is a second order reaction as already given here. So the concentration um, is, um, you can isolate the concentration as shown here. You get the reaction rate for a given time as a function of the concentration. The concentration for a given time as a function of this uh, reaction rate at, at the same time. Now, it was given that we know the K, so we just need to put K here, and we also know that the instantaneous reaction rate for a given time is 0 0.1 um, molar per second. So just put here 0 0.1 molar per second in the reaction rate for a given time. So we, we're not interested in knowing which time was this, but just we know V, T, and we know K. So we can now get A. We, we didn't use in this example um, the integrated rate law. So this is a, is a test that doesn't use the integrated rate law. But it's also useful to, to know that we can also use um, this kind of the, the rate laws to predict um, concentrations as we did here. So the answer is the correct answer is A 0 0.22 molar. And here the last slides um, with information for you is about the isolation method. So if we are going to investigate the rate laws for reaction of the type A plus B given C, we can use the isolation method. And this consists in using a large excess of one of the reagents, let's say A. In this case, A is so large, the concentration of A is so large that it becomes constant, it almost doesn't change. So it's basically the same as the initial concentration of A because the concentration of A doesn't change, it's too large. And then we analyze only the concentration of B. What happens with the concentration of B with time upon proceeding the reaction? So concentration of A is much larger than the concentration of B. So originally we would get reaction rate is equal K um, so we are assuming here an overall second order reaction and this is K multiplied by concentration of A to the power of 1 concentration of B to the power of 1 but just remember that concentration of A is in large excess so this is in fact a constant here so since A is a constant which is approximate as, as the initial concentration of A it's not equal, but it's approximated. So our reaction rate, our rate law can be simplified as an effective um, rate constant, K effective, multiplied by the concentration of B. 
just because the constant of a is a constant. So we multiply constant multiplied by another constant is equal to this constant here, effective k. Just remember effective k is the rate constant, the real rate constant of this reaction, uh, multiplied by the initial concentration of a, which basically doesn't change. So this is an approximation. Um, in this case, as you see here, the rate of reaction uh, seems to depend this is a pseudo-first-order reaction, so we think that the, the reaction has an overall first order, but it's not true. So this is a pseudo-first-order reaction, because the reaction, the overall order is second order, but when we just use a larger size of A, it seems to be a first-order reaction. So this, that's why this is called the pseudo-first-order reaction. And if we approximate this, uh, we make these approximations, we can now solve for B so that we find the K effective. And if we find K effective, we can also find K because we know that K effective, the effective rate constant is given by the real rate constant multiplied by the initial concentration of A. We can also do the same for B. Now we, we use B in large excess and originally we would have this here, so this originally would be an overall second order reaction, but since B is in large excess, which means B is approximately constant, we just rewrite um, this rate law as this here, so we have now um, a pseudo first order reaction. So the reaction seems to be first order, but is in fact a second order, but in this case B is is used as a large excess so that we can express the reaction rate as a first order but just remember when you determined uh, the um, effective k using this very simple reaction rate you remember that effective k is equal to k multiplied by the initial concentration of b so that we can now, if you know the initial concentration of B, we can now predict the reaction rate, um, uh, the, the, the rate constant K. Now, key points of this lecture, integrated rate laws can be used to give the concentration as a function of time. And uh, there are different ones, so if you have a, a zero of order reaction, you have this expression, so the concentration is given by this expression. If you have a first order reaction, you can get this expression relating concentration and time, or you have this alternative uh, expression. And if you have the second order reaction, you have this expression between uh, relation between concentration of A and the time. And we just remember that this can be um, plotted, so you can plot. Um, y against x. So remember that in your case, in the y axis, you would plot concentration of A or natural logarithm of A, concentration of A, or 1 divided by the concentration of A against time in all case. And you get the slopes, which are in this case minus k or minus k or k. And we have intercepts, which are initial concentration of A, ln of initial concentration of A and 1 divided by initial concentration of A. And the isolation method consists in using a large excess of one of the reagents, if you have this kind of reaction here, and so that you can rewrite um, the rate law in this simplified way, where we have now a pseudo first order reaction, where this effective um, K is given by the real K multiplied by the initial concentration of A. So in the last lectures we can use this, I, I will explain this a little bit better.